Elizabeth proudly presented Prince Charlie to the world. He was born to be king, unlike his mother who became the heir apparent only when her uncle abdicated. The crowd surged forward to get closer views of their own first family. By the time of Elizabeth's coronation, four-year-old Charles was already being groomed for the throne. Prince Charles proudly presenting his many school friends. Charles was the first heir to the British crown to go to school. His mother had been tutored privately. He was the first to earn a college degree, an accomplished horseman, a naval officer, an early advocate for the environment. But always he was preparing to be king, which imposed stiff constraints on a reserved young man. The level of freedom he experienced was significantly less. The, the kind of education he was expected to receive, the, the social circles he could have. The expectations upon him meant his early romance with Camilla Parker Bowles was deemed unsuitable. She was, among other things, considered a commoner. The royal family was, however, quite enamored of Lady Diana Spencer, the daughter of an earl, even though she was a teenager almost 13 years younger than Charles. I'm amazed that she's uh, been brave enough to take me on. <laughs> and I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> Their wedding was the social event of the century. Diana produced an heir and then a spare. But there was unhappiness. Charles kept up a hidden friendship with Camilla. And in the new era of intrusive mass media, Charles and Diana's troubles were exposed for all to see. The Princess of Wales suspected that her husband never really renounced his attachment to his great friend. The marriage broke up. And when Diana died in a car accident, public esteem for Charles and the royal family sunk to a new low. <laughs> And so began the laborious task of rehabilitating his relationship with the public and laying the groundwork for his future. Charles made it clear that Camilla would be by his side. She doesn't bring the sparkle that Diana did, but does provide loving and trusted support. She um, had made Charles extremely happy. Her main aim is to help him, to support him. And she's been loyal to him uh, for so long. Charles' devotion to duty is a quality he shared with his late mother, but his education and passion for issues like the environment have prepared him with a more outspoken view of the world. As I've tried to indicate for quite some time, the climate crisis really is a genuine emergency, and tackling it is utterly essential. Charles must also tackle new family dynamics, primarily with his boys, William, the constitutional heir to the throne, and Harry, now very much an outsider. Still, his larger role will be on the world stage, starting with the Commonwealth and its colonial history. Canada's attachment to the monarchy will certainly be tested. He faces unique challenges as King of Canada. The nature of Indigenous reconciliation, a nation of many people, many languages. Charles is really confronted with the reality of showing people why the monarchy is relevant. Some view Charles Reign as a placeholder between Elizabeth and William, both more popular than he. But for now, it is his dynasty and his kingdom. An apprentice and a prince for more than 70 years, Charles III is as prepared to be king as any monarch in history. Eric Sorensen, Global News.